Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's continue our 2022 tutorial for complete beginners of RimWorld, continuing on in episode 2 here, and in this episode we're going to actually get to our colonists, get to the map, talk about giving them orders, learn about how to unforbid items, equip items, navigate the map, create a stockpile and understand the work hierarchy so let's get into it okay it says the three of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and this is what you saw before as the flavor text description of the crash landed starting package and we just say okay and boom i'm immediately going to push spacebar to pause the game Okay, so now that we're actually in the main game screen, it's time to uh, discuss very, very quickly some features of the game that we need to know to become comfortable with playing it in terms of the controls. So first of all, you push spacebar to pause the game. You push spacebar right away and everything becomes frozen just like you see here and you can take a look around. Just like on the world map, you can move the camera around with the arrow keys uh, or WASD and that will allow you to take a gander around the map. In the lower right you'll see that there are time buttons so we're on pause right now but you can speed up the game by pushing spacebar again to unpause it and it'll be on play mode and then you can speed it up to uh, faster, faster modes if you wish by using the number keys um, or uh, just clicking on these buttons down here. Now, you can't see our people just yet because we are still in these pods waiting to escape. So I'm going to unpause it and you can see uh, I'm pausing it again really quickly. These are our escape pods uh, that are about to land and put us on the ground. Bam. And there's all three of them and I'm going to pause it immediately so what happened what has happened is that our three escape pods have come down and landed and the supplies that were within those escape pods has been spilled out all around us here so what is going on the easiest way again to do this is to just pause the game okay so uh, we have spacebar pushed and we're paused now here is Bonia, here is Yuto right here, and here is Mew right here. And you can double click on their icons in the up center part of the screen on the top, all right? And then over here on the left, this displays our resources and a panel that will come down. Now you can customize the UI to what you would like in certain respects, like what it shows and what it doesn't, but that's just showing us that we have zero silver at the moment but we actually have more silver than that right here but this is not counting that and we'll talk about that in a moment so now that we have the game paused the first thing that you want to do is you see all these red X's on the stuff that's around here this means that these resources have been forbidden meaning that our people will ignore them they will not interact with them or pick them up so we don't want that to happen and what we can do is go around with the mouse and double click on an item type like these are all our packaged survival meals now again just like on the world map you can zoom out or you can zoom in with the mouse wheel and now that I have all of these selected on the bottom of the screen you're gonna see a ribbon that has command categories and information categories grouped up for us the bottom left is going to be a kind of window that gives us information on what we have selected and the bottom right will tell us the temperature uh, the time of day the year the date the season and then it has all of these little buttons that we can check or uncheck that determine what is displayed and uh, some other features of the game like do we automatically rebuild structures in the home area things like that that we can toggle on and off right here and we'll talk about those as they come up but for right now what I want to show you is when you select things next to the information panel on the bottom left there are going to be these buttons that come out depending on how many different types of actions you can take upon them 
and this button right here says allow. So these col these items are now f forbidden, but if I push either F or just click on this button, you'll see that this X in the upper right corner of the allow indicator changes to a check mark and the X disappears on these items, meaning that my people will now pick them up, okay? And I'm going to um, do that for uh, a lot of these items. Now, I could just kind of go around clicking on things and saying, oh, okay, well, you know, all of the uh, steel items, can you uh, allow these and, and, and such like that? All of the wood, can you allow that? And that's fine, you can do that. Or what you can do is you can go into the architect tab in the lower left, okay? And this opens up another set of categories that you can use to give your people tasks. Now, I think it's important to say at this point in the tutorial that if you've never played Dwarf Fortress or um, Rimworld or Clan Folk or any of these kind of management games where you have multiple people that go around doing their own thing effectively, uh, Keeper, RL, whatever, you'll learn very quickly that you aren't going to be directly telling people what to do. You can to an extent, but for the most part, you issue orders and then they follow them according to a hierarchy of commands where they are taking into account their preferences um, that you set, their priorities, their level of hunger, if they're tired, all sorts of factors contribute toward what they're actually going to do. And so part of the charm and um, sometimes frustration is like saying, hey, I told you to go do this. Why is nobody doing this job? And most of the time, it's just your fault, like you need to change their priorities or, or readjust things. But um, I just want to say right now, I'm going to issue an order, okay? And just because I issue an order doesn't mean everyone will necessarily instantly follow it. Now, at the beginning, when you don't have a lot of things queued up and there um, don't, there's not a lot of tasks going on, they'll usually follow you. But just a heads up as to the game design uh, and the philosophy of how you interact with these people and your role in being their uh, steward, basically. So I'm going to play click orders, okay? And this opens up on the bottom a whole bunch of different commands I can give these people, okay? And one thing that you can do is go way over here to where um, it says allow, okay? Right next to forbid, and I can click on allow, and I can zoom out, and I can just make a giant box by clicking and dragging the left mouse button to just make a giant uh, rectangle, square, whatever you want, and Everything within that box that has been forbidden will be highlighted with a green circle, okay? So all of the things with an X you see now have a green circle around them because I'm trying to allow them. And if I let go of the left mouse button, now every single item that was there that was forbidden is now okay for me to pick up. Now I can zoom out and see if there's anything else that's forbidden, okay? And right away, I'll see that down here, there's some lumber that I want to uh, take off being forbidden. It was right here. And so some of your supplies from your crash landing get strewn about. I mean, it was a uh, rather nasty fall that you took out of orbit. So here we are. And now we've got these items unforbidden, okay? Now let's talk about our people themselves, all right? So I'm going to click on... Um, Bonilla, right? I can just click on his portrait up here, okay, um, to get him selected, and you can push the period key to shift between these different pawns that you have, all right? So, um, period goes right to left, and comma goes left to right. So you can use those to, like, cycle around with the people once you have one selected. Now, because I have Bonilla selected, let's look in the bottom left at the information panel. This type of character has more options. Not only are there commands to the right in these larger boxes that I can do, but there are these uh, panels that I can open up 
with more information about this person. So that is all something that we're going to discuss. Now this button right here that says draft um, toggles people for military draft. So if there is a battle going on, if someone is attacking you, you need to kind of get your people in the mode for fighting. And this is how you tell them, hey, stop everything you're doing. You're just going to fight and you give them commands uh, to defend your themselves and your base. Now, right now, Bonilla, it says here he is. Um, this is his health status. This is his mood. This is, um, you know, what his work schedule is. And this is where his movement schedule is. And we'll kind of talk about that. Uh, right now, you can see his job, which is listed under his gender, age, and affiliation. It says that he's wandering. Like, he has no job. He's doing nothing. And in fact, all of our people are wandering. They're kind of like punch drunk. They just crashed. So they're not doing anything, but they also really have no jobs to do. I haven't given them anything specifically to do. That's fine for right now. What I want to do at this point is look at what these people have equipped okay so for example i can cl click on the gear button for bonia and it opens up his equipment so this screen that this panel that opens up above the information panel in the lower left is a, a kind of pop out further expansion of his stuff and he says right here in apparel, he's wearing a Synthread button-down shirt, and he's wearing some pants. This is his overall armor, and this is, given the, the clothing that he is wearing, what kind of temperature range he is comfortable in. So, it you know, right now, for example, it's 31 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's like, it's actually very chilly. It's 6 a.m., um, in the spring, so he's going to be upset in, in a bit because he's kind of cold, but it should warm up for him. If we give him warmer clothing, he will be definitely happier, all right? Now, when we want to make a decision about what do we equip this guy with, we need to go into his bio, okay? So you go over to the bio panel, and this gives us the information that we just looked at extensively in the previous part of the starting out phase which is their skills all right so it shows you their skills their background what they're incapable of their traits and this guy is pretty much bad at everything except melee and so because he's okay at melee he's going to be our strongest person at melee i bet and i can just push period to cycle around to the other people and just check really quickly like what what the skills are for everybody this information panel um, the bio, whatever panel you're on will stay up when you're going through your pawns, so you can easily compare their gear and their stats and things. So I'm just going to cycle through, and very quickly you see, yep, five is the best melee. So that means I'm going to give Bonilla the knife to use. The first thing we want to do after we, you know, tell them that they can pick up the supplies that are going to be necessary for them to survive, okay, so that they can actually touch these things, is get them equipped with weapons in case anything bad happens. So I'm going to say, okay, Bonilla, you see this knife over here, dude? I want him to pick it up. So I'm going to take Bonilla. While the cursor is selected him, and there's this kind of like box outlining him saying he's selected, and it matches up here and on him, I'm going to right-click on the knife, and I'm going to say equip the knife. And what that means is when I unpause the game, he's going to go equip the knife. That is a way to issue him a direct command. You, there are a lot of things you can do in the game by giving people direct commands by selecting them and then right-clicking on a task and having them do it. Now, I just told you that you don't really get to interact with them in that way, and it is something that you can do for certain things and you can do in an emergency, but generally it's not advised to use the right-click to tell them to do things because if it's a job that takes a long time, they will take your mandate to heart and they will just do it until they pass out from exhaustion. They won't eat, they won't sleep, they'll just keep doing that job. Now in certain situations, maybe that's what you want, but for the most part, 
it behooves you because there's so many things going on to not micromanage each and every individual pawn but to give them a hierarchy of jobs to do that they follow in an order that you like so that you don't have to constantly be clicking on them and saying hey go do this and then hey now it's time to go do this because that would be um, outrageous but for something like equipping a weapon he's gonna go over here equip this knife and then that job will fall away. He's done with it. And so he won't be trying to do it anymore after he does that. So it's totally cool. You'll see now he has a job to do. And there's a line, a, a kind of like transparent white line that goes to his destination and his task. And now on his panel, you see his task has been updated. It says equipping plasteel knife. So that's what he's going to do. Okay. So now I'm going to click the bio tab again and I'm going to cycle. And Yudo has a three shooting, and um, Mew, which I'm, I know I'm saying that name incorrectly, I'm sorry Mew, has a four shooting. So she's our crack shot, so we're going to give her the best weapon that we've got, which is the bolt action rifle. Now, if you were curious, if you were like, well, how do you know that's the best weapon? Click on the bolt action rifle, you'll see it's selected down here. There's a box outlining it, and it says bolt action rifle in the lower left. And if you click on the I for information, it opens up this panel, which gives you all kinds of, well, detailed information about the weapon, including in this category, it's damage. It says it's going to do 18 damage. It has a range of 37 and it has uh, accuracy that's much better at medium range or long range, very uh, worse at short range, how long it takes to fire, how much money it's worth how much damage you can do in melee if you hit somebody with the butt of the gun, stuff like that. Um, so given that, right, I can be like, okay, this does 18 damage and has a 37 range. Well, the other gun that we have is this revolver. I'm gonna click on it and you'll see it does 12 damage and has a 26 range. Now it's better at close range, okay, which is nice, but at the same time, it is less damage. And so we want, the person who's the best with guns to have the best weapon so i'm going to tell her to equip the bolt action rifle and then yudo she's going to take the other weapon that we have which is the revolver and equip that all right i'm going to unpause the game and let them go do that now they have everything equipped and immediately enough time has passed and i'm starting to get some warnings in the game and warnings messages pop over here onto the right of the screen and it's saying People need warm clothes. It's cold. It's 31 degrees. They have, like, you know, the medical clothing, basically. They're scrubs that they were wearing in cryo sleep. They're not ready for this. They're pajamas. Uh, and they also need beds. Okay? So these are the two kind of things that they want immediately. When you mouse over this, it gives you further information. And with these giant arrows, it's telling you which colonists of yours are affected by this issue. And then... Um, I will also show you in the upper right, there is a learning helper. You can pop this out. And this is like an in-game tutorial about certain things that you could be interested in. So you could say, hey, beds or something like that um, and get information here. But it's a little bit awkward to use. Like it doesn't it didn't respond to that uh, right away. Like it doesn't understand sleep or beds or, um, you know, clothes, maybe not really. So this is more like the learning helper gives you information about alerts for example it says hey they're at the bottom right of the screen now the nice thing about the learning helper is if this is your first time playing the game they'll pop up like tutorials the first time anything happens for you and give you advice about you know what to do like how to set bills or how to tame animals and and commands and things like that in the game and it's useful in that way but if you're not sure about anything there is a rimworld wiki rimworldwiki.com that you can go to and it's very very awesome you can search for anything on there um, and get exactly most likely up-to-date information about what you need there's also a very vibrant community for this game the subreddit is a nice thing to check but for the most part you can use this for game commands and and uh ui questions and but it's not the most intuitive thing it's nice when they pop up but i don't use it very much for reference i will use the wiki if i need some kind of specific reference right away okay now 
talking about warm clothes, we do have flak pants, okay? We have a flak helmet, and we have a flak vest. And so if I look at this, unfortunately it's a vest, okay? And it doesn't really insulate someone too much against the cold. Um, it gives 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit, so it says how much this apparel improves a wearer's minimum comfortable temperature. So it's going to like in improve how much tolerance they have for the cold by 1.8, which is not great, but it's better than nothing. So what I feel like doing here is saying, all right, Bonilla is probably going to be in range of people. So I'm going to um, force him to wear this. You'll notice it's not a quip. Clothing, you kind of have to force people to wear or give them uniforms because they get to pick and choose what clothes they wear and they get to make their own like fashion choices a lot of the time, and which is hilarious to see what choices they make. But if I want them to wear this, I'm going to be like, hey, you have to wear that and you have to wear this. I'm just going to split up all of my equipment and now they have a little progress bar on them as they put on the clothing it takes time okay so now they have the clothes on oh, by the way right here this is gunther remember you get a random pet with this package we have a male husky who is on the squad how awesome okay now as the game is paused let's take a look around to get our bearings remember you can zoom out you can zoom in where are we okay i'm just gonna peer around the map to see what is here okay and right now the main thing i want to focus on is building a shelter building beds building some kind of security measure and getting food production online and also creating a stockpile so that people will organize the items that we have uh, in a location that is centralized and hopefully safe from animals or people stealing it. Now, down here, I just noticed that these steel um, are forbidden. I'm going to allow it, okay, so that they will get those if they need steel. All right. Another fun thing you can do is just say, okay, there's trees around me. I know I need trees. Hey, look, there's a steel wall. There was some old building that's here. I can actually use this as uh, a wall of our own dwelling to kind of uh, save some resources and have a really, really strong wall to our base. So this is actually pretty useful for us. There's donkeys on our map. Now, we can either hunt them if we want to get food, or we could try to tame them if we want to domesticate donkeys. Donkeys are great. They're beasts of burden. They can carry stuff for you on caravans. But right now, the focus is on is uh, for settling in. If you are curious, uh, you know, you can always just poke around and look at these different tabs to see what's going on. But what I want to do is just set up some commands and see if they're going to follow them right away. So I'm going to go to Architect again, where we gave the orders. And I'm going to, this time, instead of giving them an order, right now I'm just going to say Structure, okay? And the Structure panel opens up these options, and I'm going to select Wall. And we're going to build wooden walls, okay? And you can build walls out of different materials. When you click on this, you can say, I want to build steel walls, or I want to build walls out of money, or something like that, if you're really feeling flamboyant. But don't do that. Go wood at first. Now, of course, wood can catch on fire, and it's not the strongest, but it's cheap and readily available at the beginning. So if I start to build this, you're going to see that there's a green box where my designation will begin. And it tells me right away, this is going to cost you five wood and you don't have any wood stored, right? So I'm going to be like, well, what do you mean? I got all this wood. No, not yet. I don't. Um, now, I can tell them to do this and they'll just pick up wood from around. But if you want the game to know how much you have, you click on zone and you say stockpile. And then... Uh, you, which is B or this pink button here, okay? And I'm just going to tell people for the time being, I'm going to drag this out to here and make a stockpile, okay? Now, this stockpile, um, if you click in the upper right corner of the stockpile, it 
it selects it. You can tell it's a stockpile, by the way. It's it's a little bit hard on the dirt, but it has like a red transparency over it where the box is, where I've designated that area. And if I move my mouse cursor from the soil here, and by the way, in the lower left, where there's no information panel if I have nothing selected, it just gives you info on what your mouse is hovering over. So I'm hovering over some lit soil uh, that's 100% fertilized, for example. And if I move over here, you'll see that it says stockpile zone one. So the mouse knows like where the stockpile is. Now I'm gonna click on this and click on the panel in the upper right storage, okay? And this tells you that what you can store here. And right now, um, most of the stuff is being stored here, but it says no chunks, no plants, and no corpses, meaning it's not going to store like this big chunk of rock, for example, but they will store everything else. So if I unpause the game, okay, now you'll see that um, most of my people are going to start moving things, right? So here they go. So he's wandering, but she's got the job where she's going to move the silver to the stockpile. And y Yuto is hauling the medicine to the stockpile. And eventually Bonilla will snap to and will start doing his thing. And that's what I mean about giving them commands. I told them by building this stockpile, hey, I want to, you guys to haul everything that you can to the stockpile. But I never said for them to do that. So how do they know? Well... They know like this. If I open up the work panel, okay, you can see that they have a list of jobs that they can do. And they start on the left with firefight and they go all the way to the right with research. The highest priority tasks are at the left and the lowest priority tasks are over here on the right. So what that means is if a person has a checkbox on a task, they will do it in the order of left to right. Hauling is what they're doing right now, and you can see how low priority that is. But right now, we're doing just a very, very basic screen for priorities, and I'm going to go over here where it says manual priorities, and I'm going to click on this, and this will change this screen here where it's just check or no check, all or nothing, into a numbered system. And the numbered system is going to tell people what order they should do the jobs that is more nuanced than just left to right okay so they will still operate under the left to right paradigm but now we can give them order within that by clicking on these priorities so for example hauling is a level three which is normal priority but if i really want to prioritize this i can left click on it to make it a number one which is top priority and this means they will do this above all else like they will haul as much as they can forever as their job unless something that has a one priority that is higher up the food chain to the left needs done so this lets you have more control over what you want your people to do now i recommend right away on the left you want to set firefighting patient doctor bed rest and basic to number one all right this means that these jobs they will just always do these with top priority above anything else because they're so important firefighting like if there's a fire that breaks out you want people to drop everything and put that out patient like if they're hurt and they need medical attention you want them to not do anything else go get go rest up go get healed doctor please take care of the sick people bed rest okay um if you have an illness that's not life-threatening i still want you to recover from it and then basic is like flip switches or um other small tasks you'll see here that these people don't have doctor even selected okay um which it says they will not do it but you can override this initial selection of will not do and give them a priority on it if and only if they don't have some kind of incapable status of a job if they are incapable of doing a job you can't prioritize it but now i want everyone to have these at level one priority i could shift these down like 
to number two and to number two for these two people for doctoring because this person is my best doctor. Okay, so I could think about that if I want this person to always be the doctor. That's a consideration. But for right now, I'm going to have everybody just at number one because all of these jobs are so important. Doctoring is super important, but I'm going to shift these people to number two so that they do doctoring, but this guy does it first because it's the most important job um, that we want done by a skilled person, all right? So firefighting, patient, bed rest, and basic, you don't really even have a skill that governs how good you are at these things. You just want them to be done. So everybody has those at one. Then the person with your highest skill in these categories, you want at number one. So Bonilla, I want him to be the warden, which means talk to prisoners, okay? Um, I want our best cook, which is right here, to be number one priority. Um, I want construction to be done by the person with the best skill. And you can look, if you mouse over it, it'll say for Miu, for example, for construction, she has an average of relevant skills at nine, meaning she's our best at construction. So I'm gonna say, please do this, okay? Um, I'm also gonna turn on construction for Bonilla, even though he's not good at it, because I just want things to get built, all right? Now, um, hunting, I also want you to do with good priority, um, and she's good at that. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, let's see, growing, you definitely need to be number one, planting our stuff for us. And now we're getting a very, very good hierarchy of jobs. Our most skilled people are on our important skilled tasks, doctoring, um, construction, growing, and warden. Okay, and then everything else, if we want it to be done by people, we can turn it on. Right now, I don't care about art. I'm not tailoring anything. Later, you can switch all of these things on if you want it done. But right now, I'm happy with this. They're going to just go ahead and move things. Now, I'm going to um, push number one to go just to normal speed. You can push two or three to go really, really fast if you want them to just build these things. Uh, I'm sorry, move these things to the stockpile immediately. But right now, I don't. I'm just okay with watching them work and thinking about what my next course of action will be which is going to be to build and map out the outline of a structure and start getting some area cleared off for that structure.